welcome to the 72nd leadership leaders lecture by Aishwarya Desikan. And uh, before I hand over the platform to Aishwarya, let me have the pleasure of uh, welcoming her to this wonderful uh, platform on this great evening. Uh, very illustrious career, I, I think some of you or maybe uh, quite a few of you must have seen her profile. Uh, you know, she has got close to about 27 years of experience, out of which majority of that, that's close to about 23 years, uh, uh, five months precisely, she has been with one company and that is HSBC. And before she joined uh, HSBC in uh, 2000, she was with uh, uh, LKP Forex India Limited for a brief time, that just about nine months as customer service executive. And after that, she was with uh, International Inner Wheel, uh, IAWC Madras North for uh, three years, that is between 2010 and 2013. And uh, in 2000, as precisely in March 2000, she joined uh, uh, HSBC as Custom Service Manager, and she grew uh, later on to be Associate Vice President, Vice President, then Senior Vice President, then the Director and Regional Head. And currently, uh, she is the Director and Head of South India for uh, Wealth and Personal Banking for HSBC. And she also is an ICF Certified Coach. And I'm sure uh, all of us will have great insight. I would say actionable insights for uh, you know the coaching and mentoring because uh, at some point of our career, each one of us need that in little nudge you know, to, uh, you know, to to catapult pulled our careers and that's where she comes with a very uh, uh you know illustrious experience and i'm sure like i said we will have great insights well absolutely great pleasure to have you aishwarya and i'm sure uh, you know all of us look forward to a uh, great uh, you know, insights from your experience over to you aishwarya thank you thank you so much dr chaudhary for having me and a very good evening to everyone who are present here this evening um, like you said, I think it's been a long career. It's been a very interesting career. And uh, I think all of us go through, go through a lot of ups and downs uh, in our career journeys at various times. And as you go through that, I think uh, this particular topic, uh, when they said, you know, speaking about coaching and mentoring, I think this was something which is very, very close to heart for me because a lot of people have played a very important role in my career. Uh, in the various courses that it has taken over the time. And we do have, uh, you know, a lot of uh, small bends in our career from time to time. And there have been people who have been associated who have helped in navigating it forward uh, throughout. Um, and hence, I thought that this was a good topic which I might want to share with all of you. More importantly, I think in the last few years, and especially post the pandemic, uh, I think all of us have seen a lot of changes in our own orientation towards life, towards career, and what it brings to all of us at the end of the day. I personally have done a whole lot of reevaluation uh, about what is it that um, you know I am really seeking. What are the things that I absolutely value when I say my career? Uh, it has helped me rethink my relationship uh, with work. It has helped me rethink what is balance to me, what exactly a state of balance uh, and flexibility really works, um, you know, and it also has helped me kind of understand what is it that I want to make an impact on, uh, what is the legacy that I want to leave behind and fulfill my own, uh, you know, personal and professional needs from time to time, which are ever changing. Uh, so that's why this topic and the people uh, who have, been playing a significant part makes a big difference. Before I jump into that, I just want to share a small video clip with all of you, something that might be familiar to most of you and something I'm sure will resonate with all. Uh, so yeah, just bear with me while I share this. Uh सत्तर मिनट सत्तर मिनट है तुम्हारे पास शायद तुम्हारी जिंदगी के सबसे खास सत्तर मिनट आज तुम अच्छा खेलो या बुरा ये सत्तर मिनट तुम्हें जिंदगी भर याद रहेंगे तो कैसे खेलना है आज मैं तुम्हें नहीं बताऊंगा बस इतना कहूंगा कि जाओ और ये सत्तर मिनट 
जी भर कर खेल लो क्योंकि इसके बाद आने वाली जिंदगी में चाहे कुछ सही हो या ना हो चाहे कुछ रहे या ना रहे तुम हारो या जीतो लेकिन ये सत्तर मिनट तुमसे कोई नहीं छीन सकता कोई नहीं तो मैंने सोचा कि इस मैच में कैसा खेलना है आज मैं तुम्हें नहीं बताऊंगा बल्कि तुम मुझे बताओगे खेल कर क्योंकि मैं जानता हूं कि अगर ये सत्तर मिनट इस टीम का हर प्लेयर अपनी जिंदगी की सबसे बढ़िया हॉकी खेल गया तो ये सत्तर मिनट खुदा भी तुमसे वापस नहीं मांग सकता तो जाओ जाओ और अपने आप से इस जिंदगी से अपने खुदा से और हर उस इंसान से जिसने तुम्हें तुम पर भरोसा नहीं किया अपने सत्तर मिनट जी Thank you. I think uh, this is a very, very iconic clip. A lot of you would have seen it, and I'm sure it resonates with all of you, especially when it speaks about coaching, uh, right? Because uh, this is one character, and in fact, he makes a very classic statement that, uh, you know, at the end of the day, he says that uh, team बनाने के लिए ताकत की नहीं नियत की जरूरी होती है. Uh, that is very very important that intention of wanting to make that difference that intention of putting your best foot forward is something that all of us have to give into and that is something is completely in our hands what we do with our careers what we do with our life is something that we have to work upon uh, and keep working upon continuously from time to time i definitely do uh, and i keep reevaluating what i need to do to be able to do slightly better than what i am today and to be able to give that best shot at every opportunity uh, but we can't do it alone and there are a lot of people who are behind the success of all of us and uh, let me just share my screen uh, so that there is a little bit of coherence to what i'm speaking about there is one thought uh, or this again is something that some of you might have heard about uh, is having something called a personal board of directors for yourself right this is something which is very very important for everyone's career what is a board of director right these are people who are independent who are on if you see a company uh, who are helping in challenging the company navigating the company towards success and when you talk about your personal board these are people who take interest in you as a human being as a person and in your career and are helping you navigate yourself forward a lot of such people have played fantastic and important jobs and when you say personal board typically there are multiple roles there are about four five people at any point in time uh, i would like to probably group it as say mentors coaches your peers your colleagues your leaders and uh, also your sponsors now in this the most impactful of uh, you know the best personal board of directors are always the mentor and the coaches a lot of time we kind of use these terms very interchangeably uh, but actually speaking fundamentally coaching and mentoring are two very very different things and i thought i'll just spend some time talking about what is coaching what is mentoring how having independent coach and a mentor to work with you helps enhancing uh, and making our career paths a little more easier for all of us with little more direction and support from people yeah so we will start first with mentor itself right and mentor as a concept is not something which is new to india uh, if you look at since our epics right you take ramayan or mahabharat um, so let's start with ramayan for example the moment you say mentor the name that comes to your mind is jambavan uh, because they say that while hanuman had the power and a lot of ability in him he did not know that he had all of this potential and all of that power it took a jambavan to try and show hanuman the mirror to say that this is how powerful he is he will be able to actually fly across ocean to be able to reach lanka 
and if jambavan was not there hanuman would not have even realized what lies within him uh, because he kept thinking that he is just another monkey right he did not know that there is so much of hidden potential within him uh, similarly in mahabharat in fact mahabharata has multiple episodes and people who are uh, you know typical mentors like you have dronacharya who is the mentor for the entire you know the children who is the guru and all of us in fact in our lives have had those impactful teachers those impactful professors who played a very very important role in shaping our earlier lives and careers by giving us direction giving us challenges uh, beyond what we thought we could achieve uh, most powerful of this in management lesson still day is krishna and arjuna's uh, story the bhagavad gita and how krishna becomes a mentor to arjuna why is this important primarily because uh, krishna is able to guide arjuna and when arjuna is asked to choose between a huge army and the mentor he chose the mentor it shows that the power a mentor can have over you to be able to overcome such a vast army just by the sheer presence of person being there and believing in you and really propelling you towards your greatness i think that is one big big lesson that we can learn like that if you go through you have chanakya you have multiple you know you have the ramakrishna parmahamsa who was actually the mentor to swami vivekananda and in modern times if you actually google every uh, uh, you know key personality actually works with a mentor you know so you have for example mark zuckerberg who actually talks about how steve jobs was his mentor um, uh, maya anglo was a big mentor to oprah winfrey so you have multiple examples of people taking on mentors in fact i uh, keep thinking you know reading about this quote by richard branson and who says that if you are a successful business person you will always have had a great mentor at some point in your road you know so that is how powerful the role of a mentor is and why is it powerful because a mentor is someone who knows you who has been there done that who's had that experience and who is able to through his wisdom or his or her wisdom share a lot of thoughts with all of us right uh, so what does a mentor really help to do first and foremost a mentorship is an agreement of faith Uh, agreement of trust between the mentor and the mentee they help you believe in yourself they believe in you right and i reflect back upon one of my mentors i think when you say a 27 year long career and 23 years in the same organization it's not easy there are ups and downs in fact there have been a time mid this about 10 12 years in the career when i felt that you know i'm hitting the ceiling this is not working for me let me quit and i actually said that okay enough is enough it's time to move out and there was this mentor i still remember it was april of 2012 when i said that i am making a move and there was this mentor who really stopped me and said that and he really sat me down spoke to me for 10 minutes showed me what else i could achieve and how i'm not challenging myself enough how i'm thinking too internally how i'm thinking too small in terms of what i want to do and how in a large organization and a multinational organization i could do much much more just by thinking wider and if i sit back today and reflect i can actually divide my career saying pre that conversation and post that conversation and the twists and turns that it has taken after have been fantastic the opportunities that i've got after have been fantastic he has played a fabulous role in personally impacting me and continues to do so so even today if i am in doubt or if i just need a good pep talk i just can pick up the phone have a chat with him i have a fantastic personal relationship primarily from that faith and trust that both of us share with each other uh, you know and the biggest thing is that a mentor is able to see beyond you and they are able to respond respond not just to what you are saying but you are emotions what is coming from within you and number 3 and very very important they are available for you it is important to choose a mentor who is equally willing to invest their time and effort in you that becomes super important because their accessibility is key if the person is not accessible not available uh, it's just a waste of time because you know pearls of wisdom many people can give but they really have to impact you beyond that number 2 and very very key 
and important in any mentoring relationship is the focus and the drive that it is able to bring in you right uh, so there is a story in mahabharata if you are aware of uh, you know where they say that dronacharya actually calls all the students and someone says that you are very partial towards arjuna and he says uh, i'll show you why so he calls all the students and there is this lovely tree and there is a bird sitting on the tree and he calls the students and one by one he asks them what do you see some of them talk about the scenery some of them talk about the landscape some of them talk about the tree there are a few who actually talk about the bird but it is only arjuna he says that i see the pupil of that bird that is the focus that arjuna had which he was able to instill in him so it is important that we have a clear goal and a mentor is able to kind of navigate you towards that particular goal that you have in mind and sharpen that for you as you go along in your way right so that's why having that focus and helping them with that focus is very very important and number 3 is the flow the flow and the direction there will be challenges there will be not, uh, you know twists and turns but a mentor helps you identify and helps you solve for it solve for it in the sense of giving you probably a little more i will say uh, solution thinking opportunities uh, so rather uh, you know so i've had this mentor uh, there have been times when i always go with you know earlier when i went into mentorship i used to go with the list of my problems to say that i have this problem that problem this not happening that's not happening and he used to have this knack of just navigating me towards thinking of a solution for myself to say that what is it that you could do to be able to navigate the situation better right and the moment you shift your focus from your problem to a solution saying that this is what i want to achieve how do i go about it then your mindset becomes that of a growth mindset automatically and you know the entire rewiring that you do just changes and this is again someone who is very very good similarly another thing which is important when you choose a mentor is that uh, the person has an experience he has a perspective and very very different from what you do so that they challenge you it need not be someone who is older to you by default we always associate that if someone is a mentor they probably are much older so i've had times when i've actually worked with a mentor and one particular was much younger to me uh, but had a very huge responsibility a very diverse portfolio i happened to be working with him through a project and he was able to give me a very completely unique perspective and take on how to view one's career and coming from someone so young and with a very fresh thought process kind of helped me change myself he helped me understand how does one put up a value for oneself how do you ask for what you are worth how do you negotiate better uh, you know so he was able to help me set those boundaries and conversations sometimes we just take things for granted we are always waiting for things to happen to us and he helped me understand how to take charge of your own career so a mentor need not be someone who is older to you but it definitely has to be someone who will add value to you that becomes absolutely important and i think all of you will have this question in your mind immediately to say that how do i approach a mentor what is in it for them why will someone take me as a mentor uh, but i used to have similar Uh, challenges initially or inhibitions initially because i used to be a big introvert and it's very difficult for me to go start a conversation with someone i used to feel that it's very selfish of me to just go ask for help and hence how do i even go and start it but over time and after working with people one thing i have realized is that some of the greatest leaders are super humble they are super humble they are super generous they really want to lift people and it gives them a sense of fulfillment and satisfaction that we are even approaching them it it really makes them feel purposeful and we as a mentee when we go to them help fulfill their desire of wanting to make the difference to others so there is a lot of hidden purpose that you are solving for them by actually approaching someone for being a mentor so it is just about i think we just have to let go of our internal inhibitions our egos and instead think of you know uh, the mentors as people who are genuine people who are 
generous and people who are absolutely grateful to you that you are able to also add value to them. And over time now, I also am a mentor to a lot of youngsters in the organization. And I exactly feel the same. Uh, in fact, one of the most interesting mentees that I've had is someone who just graduated from a graduate program in an international, uh, you know, uh, one of the, actually an international mentee who graduated and immediately took me on as a mentor. And she used to come so prepared uh, for every session with a whole lot of questions. It was absolutely amazing. And I think I could learn so much from her in terms of how to approach a career, how to have balance, uh, why, uh, you know, how do you challenge the thought process? How do you challenge the internal systems? Uh, I've taken back so much more than what probably I gave her. So there is a lot of reverse mentoring which happens in any mentor-mentee relationship, which might not be visible to our eyes, which might hold us back. But just believe in it and go with it. And trust me, people are nice, people are available, and people are very much available to help and support us from time to time. How is mentorship different from coaching? And this is something which is very, very uh, close to heart for me because mentors and coaches together actually uh, you know, play very different roles. Uh, I have personally been coached a few years ago. And since then, I realized that a coach has a very unique and powerful role to play in our career beyond our mentors. A lot of us have mentors, right? From time to time in careers, it's very easy to associate with someone and learn. Coaches, very few people work with. But a coach, uh, coachy relationship is something that is beyond work. It is something that does to you as a person, it just kind of absolutely changes you as a person. So uh, that is one thing which I feel is the fundamental difference between mentorship and coaching. And uh, this particular quote by John Oden, who himself is one of the well-renowned football coaches, uh, you know, NBA coaches, is something which is very close to heart. It says that good coach can change a game. A great coach can change a life. Uh, you will see a lot of coaches and coaches are more famous from sports, but today you see them across all businesses, right? And leaders themselves are trying to be better coaches to our teams because you no longer are wanting a manager to say what to do. You rather want someone to get the best out of you. All of us know what we have to do in our careers uh, or in the roles that we do. We just want someone to get the best potential out of us. And that's really what a coach does. Um, and that's when I'm thinking about, you know, there is this fantastic book uh, by Tim Galway. Uh, it's called The Inner Game of Tennis. It's a very small book and there are snippets available even on YouTube. Um, what it really talks about is that there is always a subconscious mind and a conscious mind. And both of them are in conflict with each other. And in a game, especially when you're on the field playing a sport, you have people around you. There is so much pressure. There are so many people watching. It is very, very easy to get distracted. And hence, your conscious mind is always directing you into multiple things. And, you know, the subconscious mind is the one which helps you win the game. If you have controlled your subconscious mind and told it what to do, uh, you know, and how you are able to navigate between the two is really what transforms into how successful you are in the game finally, right? And how is a coach able to do that? The coach does that just by listening. To you. So when you have a coach, you have someone who gives you a space which is non-judgmental, which is a place where you can be absolutely vulnerable and authentic and share your innermost fears. And great coaches have the ability to talk you through and unpeel the various layers that are there within us to finally understand where all of our inhibitions are really flowing from, right? So they have this ability. Uh, so some of the coaches that, uh, in fact, one big, big coach who's uh, iconic to me is Dr. Marshall Goldsmith. In fact, I recently also was fortunate to attend a live webinar by him uh, for a couple of days. Uh, very, very inspiring. The kind of books that he's written are phenomenal. In fact, there's one in particular, if you're interested, it's called What Got You Here Won't Take You There. This is one book which you can read at any time in your life and you will always find something new from it. Um, it really challenges you to the next level of helping you self-aware and how do you take it to the next level, right? And uh, similarly, you all, you would have heard a lot about 
Simon Sinek and the Apple story of, you know, the power of why. What is, what is it that Apple does differently that really got people to start uh, build that great a brand called Apple? It's a fantastic uh, story which talks about the purpose of the organization. And all of us also individually similar have a purpose of what is it that drives us? What gives us satisfaction at the end of the day? Uh, and it helps you to kind of self-analyze yourself and a coach really plays that role of helping you feel yourself, understand what is really driving you as the final motive. So on superficially, we can all say that I want to do this, I want to do that. Uh, but what is really triggering us wanting to do it uh, is something that we don't understand or we don't acknowledge most times or we don't give too much importance to most, most times. And when you're having a coaching conversation, typically coaches or a coaching conversations are very short-term assignment. They are not someone who are always with you. They are with you for a purpose. They are with you with a specific goal. They work with you only to help analyze and overcome something specific in life. And when you do that, they are able to peel your layers, understand, are there any limiting beliefs within ourselves? What is really blocking us from making that change? All of us want to change. All of us want to make that difference. Like if you are someone who is wanting to lose weight uh, and knows that I have to get up in the morning, exercise, but you might not be making that time. Uh, there is probably something that is holding you back and a coach will be able to exactly identify what is holding you back and take you to that next level. A lot of us, might want that next big career move. But when it actually comes to putting up a hand for it, we might hold back. We might not be doing it. What really comes in the way? What is stopping us? Uh, what are the beliefs that we carry subconsciously, which is kind of holding us back and creating a fear in us, is something that a coach will be able to open up for you. And when you work with a powerful coach, and I've actually worked with a few of them personally, it kind of brings that spark in you in that conversation. Sometime it kind of hits you that, you know, this is what I've been doing different. And this is what I've been doing. Uh, uh, you know, what is holding me back really? And I get, you get into that zone of self-awareness. Uh, you start understanding yourself better. And there is a lot more inner stability and control. And that impact is lasting. And trust me, uh, I've personally experienced it that since the time, and that's also one reason why after just being coached, I wanted to become a coach myself. Uh, because when you become a coach, you also end up having to coach others and get coached by others. So you spend enough hours really practicing the skill. And when you do that, it kind of really humbles you. It puts you in a space of zero judgment. It helps you. It makes you more accepting of people. And it helps you then differentiate something called behavior and meaning, right? What people do is their behavior. What we make of it is our meaning. Like, for example, we're having a conversation and I'm looking at my watch, right? I'm just looking at my watch. Maybe I'm running late. I don't know. But someone might interpret it to say that, you know, she's not interested in talking to me and that's why she's looking at her watch, which might actually not be the problem at all. It could probably be just some sheer emergency or a meeting, but I'm just looking at my watch. The thing is that looking at my watch as a behavior, what the person took from it is the meaning. And this is a very smallest of example, but if you just apply to everything that happens in our life, most of the time, a lot of our limiting beliefs are because of these meanings that we write for ourselves and not really because of someone else's behavior. While we blame people for it, but actually if you think back and reflect, it is not them. They would have forgotten and long gone. We would be holding it because we have made a big meaning of it. And we've made a big fuss of it that we really have conditioned ourselves to believe that this is what we are. And a coach helps break those habits. A coach helps build lasting habits. And it really creates an impact with us for life that it just stays with you, right? So if you look at mentorship and you look at coaching, these are two very distinct roles that people play. A mentor is someone who is probably more experienced than you, who has been in the in that role, done the thing, um, or done something else which you inspire you. And it's a very long-term relationship. They normally are with you throughout your journey at various points coming, helping you, uh, and just being there for you, right? And there is, it's not a paid arrangement. It is more two people, someone who's absolutely interested 
and take satisfaction in the fact that you are doing good. Someone who really means well for you. Very long term, very personal relationship. A coach is not so. A coach could probably also be a mentor who knows what it is, but otherwise, on the circumference, a coach is typically a short term engagement. It could be a few months. It could be at best a year or so. Uh, but typically, coaching arrangements run for six months, uh, three to six months, uh, or up to a year at best, right? And these are specific. It is towards addressing certain beliefs you carry, certain behavior to prepare you to a specific goal. Now, you as a person can decide what is it that you want from it. How am I turning up? What exactly do I want to take back or take out of this conversation, be it with the mentor, be it with the coach? and identify it. And I would urge all of you that if you don't have this already, create like a small mental map of your own personal board of directors. Put yourself in the center, map out the various people who already might have a lot of impact on your career, how close they are, how distant they are, more geographically as well as in terms of the relationship that you hold with them or how constantly you're in touch with them. And how, which are the ones which really have been impactful for you and how, who are the ones you want to work with? It could also mean a set of people that you are inspired by, you don't know, identify who can connect you to them, get connected and start off taking those relationships uh, to be able to balance out. But when you have that personal board and when you have those mentors and those coaches, then you feel that you're not in this alone. Everyone makes mistakes, everyone learns from their mistakes, but there's always this guiding force which helps you navigate, takes you through and gives you a sense of satisfaction when you go on to the next level, right? So finally, uh, what is very, very important at the end of the day is this concept called I want. It is actually something by Dr. Marshall Goldsmith. I said already that he's an idol. I really look up to him. And this is one thing that he actually gave through the webinar to all of us to say that, it is finally left to our intention. Am I willing at this time to make the investment that is required so that I can make a difference on this particular aspect of my life? It could be anything. And that's why I've kept this blank. You could fill it with difference on your career or something even more very, very specific in terms of a role that you want to do, a particular assignment that you want to do, or something about your life that you want to work on, or a behavior that you want to work on, anything, right? But it finally comes down to us wanting to make that investment intentionally, which is required for each one of us to finally make that difference. And people are available. People can be leveraged upon and called for to help us at various times to be able to guide us to make that purposeful uh, career. Right. So I would love to pause now and uh, I'm happy to take any questions that any of you might have uh, at this juncture. Thank you, Deshka. I'm, I'm absolutely interesting. And uh, we have quite a few, but let me start with uh, the first one. Uh, you know, generally, I think what I know, like, uh, you know, you said, you know, there's a difference between the coach and the mentor, right? Now, uh, the coach can be from your immediate uh, line of work or within the company, right? Now, uh, 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 should a mentor also be from the same company or from outside your company, outside the industry, or from anywhere, you know, your walk of life kind of thing. And then how, uh, I would say, uh, uh, easy or maybe how preferred it is to have coach as well as a mentor from the same industry, frame line of work, or frame from the same company as well, uh, Aishwarya. So uh, I will flip it this way. So mentor can be from your own industry. It helps to have someone from your industry from time to time because they have that experience and expertise to make very sharp uh, goal setting for you if that's what you're looking for. Uh, if there is something very generic about your life that you're looking for, then it, it's not mandatory to have someone only from your industry. It could be anyone who is experienced, who has that value add which they can make as an impact to you. Mm -hmm. uh, that is absolutely there. A coach, on the other hand, can be anyone. It need not be from the industry at all. Uh, a coach, because a coach will not tell you what to do. Mm. A coach will get you to do what you have to do. Mm. A mentor tells you at some point what to do or kind of guides you to what you have to do, right? Instead of even telling some mentors, really guide. But a coach, a good coach will never tell you what to do. 
they will not even guide you to a particular goal because that could be their goal a coach will only ask you questions a good coaching session typically is when you talk most of the time the coach will just nudge you to open up and speak and understand yourself what is going on within yourself and take you to the next level and hence a coach can be anyone who is certified uh, of course but one thing i would love to say at this juncture is that there are a lot of people who call themselves coaches because it's a very freely used terminology <laughs> uh, icf is one organization which formally certifies coaches globally uh, uh, like that there are just two organizations globally which certify people always look for someone who is formally certified as a coach from an international organization of repute because it comes with very clear guidelines it is like a membership it's like if you become a chartered accountant and a lawyer you're part of that panel you have to renew your membership you have to attend seminars upgrade yourself from time to time mm-hmm. icf is like that they are very very stringent about their membership they certify their coaches and you have to keep renewing and working on themselves so if it's a certified coach then they know what to do uh, then uh, you don't need to really look for any domain expertise or anything if they are certified you can really start working with very good now uh, uh, the second thing uh, i i think one of the question that has come up uh, um, uh, i sure is that you know uh, we get to see now i think there is so much uh, talk about of course very positively about uh, i mean indian startups and you know entrepreneurial ventures and invariably every startup of uh, ceo or the venture ceo you know falls back on uh, the one of the one of the that maybe a coach or mentor but uh, that's one you know how uh, uh, you know preferred again to have uh, um, you know they either coach or mentor because you get to see uh, people on the two spectrum right one is where they start on their own and they don't look for anything and then they just uh, you know keep going and they keep rediscovering them so that's one way of looking at it but then i think just to has you know has in uh, their uh, you know the entrepreneurial journey you know they don't want to reinvent the wheel they go up to they seek the advice or the counsel from uh, the you know reputed coach or a mentor and therefore you know they get to uh, you know accelerate their entrepreneurial journey that's two, so two different uh, parts of the same spectrum kind of thing that's one the second question that i have related to this one is that and we have seen quite a few instances where um, you know wife and husband uh, Uh, you know were the co-founders of a company and uh, during the process right uh, you get to see that maybe one of i think uh, you know not uh, sounding any uh, i want to be you know neutral general gender uh, uh, right so uh, you know we have seen quite a few instances where things didn't go well and therefore they had to you know, uh, you know, uh, you know the, the whole thing is that either one of them had to either quit or you know, they, they have even a, at a dent in the personal relationship as well i think somewhere i think uh, you know that coaching or mentoring maybe because uh, you know started uh, looking at as well, you start dictating somebody's you know act you know, you know what to say course of action kind of thing so therefore how do you look at these things because uh, when you say you are coaching and mentoring do you see uh, or maybe from your experience do you see where people insist that you know whatever you're suggesting has to be acted upon or is it that you know they just give you that piece of advice and they will request you to act upon the way you want it so therefore there's no uh, uh, insistence that you know their uh, advice should be followed upon uh, aishwarya that's a very interesting question actually so see on a mentorship right typically what happens is it is you go ask for advice and someone guides you what to do Mm-hmm. Uh, or gives you a little bit of perspective of what probably they might have done or what they feel is right it might or might not work for you but you believe in the person you trust in the person and they are giving it to you with their best intentions for you and hence it typically works in most of the time because they are equally invested in you in a coach scenario similar but only difference in a coaching uh, setup is it is a paid agreement right a coach is a paid coach that you hire and hence people tend to be a little more committed of having to work towards what they commit there have been instances where people sign up coaches they say that i will take action points because i have realized that okay i have to do 1 2 3 4 5 but you don't do anything to change yourself a coach cannot do anything so it's like that uh, you know that uh, clip that we saw of shahrukh khan right people can be there to guide you but finally what we make of it is what is matters at the end of the day and to answer your first question uh see today what we see is the successful startups a lot of people on an average apparently a good entrepreneur goes through at least five or seven different 
uh, business cycles and failures before he really hits on a success. We see only when it comes to the brim of that funding and that successful and have they made it, right? And when they become a unicorn, uh, what happened prior, most of us don't know. And how many such people, like as we speak every day, are getting incubated, looking at those ideas, but not able to make that cut is equally and tremendously high. A good coach or a good mentor will be able to help them hold on, navigate, understand their purpose and take it forward. Personally and professionally, it is similar. Ultimately, the work we have to do. But there are people who are available and we can draw from their insights. We can draw from using them to help us make a better version of ourselves. Now, um, yeah, uh, very good. I think I'm just circling back to one of the things that you said sometime, uh, I think, you know, from your own personal experience, uh, Ishwara, which is very interesting, in fact. Uh, you know, you talked about uh, uh, reverse mentoring, right? Uh, uh, I think uh, we have heard uh, quite a few companies actually trying to institutionalize this uh, practice. But then uh, I know uh, one big automobile company down south where you know they are having uh, a lot of uh, troubles with uh, the new generation joining the plant, you know, the plant, and then uh, you know they had a lot of issues, and therefore I mean, they're not accepting the change, you know, that uh, that is required. But therefore they're holding back. And then finally, uh, then the the company had to take a decision that I think they should be reverse mentored by these youngsters who are joining from some of the finest colleges and they have you know the you know the the, the future uh, in their mind so therefore they did it and it really worked and they, thankfully it really worked and uh, you know, now it is a, a great uh, story there so the question here uh, is uh, one is that and uh, uh, how do you you know when you have to accept someone who's very junior to you right and all said and done because the human behavior is human behavior at the end of the day how do you separate yourself from that, you know, the being egoistic or being that self-respect, you know, zone point of view, that's one. And the second one is that, do you uh, suggest, therefore, uh, every company should actually institutionally, because now we're talking about Zen Zers getting into the companies, I think, you know, by you cross the millennials, now we're talking about Zen Zers, and definitely they'll come with... Um, uh, I mean, a very, very progressive and sometimes very, very, um, I would say, disruptive ideas, right? Maybe not all of them will be working out, but maybe some of them definitely worth, uh, you know, working it out. So therefore, do you think, uh, uh, you know, uh, HR companies, uh, you know, should be mandated that they should actually formalize a reverse mentoring program? Because now that, uh, you know, every company knows that, you know, every year you keep recruiting uh, people, you know, being uh, the Zen Zers. Do you suggest that they should uh, actually start looking at some sort of a buddy scheme so therefore, they get to, they may not be implementing, but at least they get to see their you know the story, side of the story than being you know only in the board meetings, only in the you know some presentations and all that. But where they have a free willing discussion about, I'm sure they'll have opinion about anything, whether it's a market spans, whether it's a, uh, you know promotions or whether it's going expansions. I'm sure they will have something other. And mostly they would be having, uh, uh, you know, the not just point of view, but maybe they have a strong, uh, 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 what is the urge to make a difference in that uh, area as well. So how do you look at these two, uh, Aishwarya? So uh, very, very interesting question. And I think, uh, see, honestly speaking, right, all of us are doing a job. Uh, sometimes what happens is it's an ego that sets in to say that I'm in a state of power. <laughs> and, uh, and hence we feel that we are superior because of a designation that we hold, which is not. Right, everyone, because ultimately the leaders are what they are, thanks to the people on the feet who are actually doing the job that is expected in any organization. Right, otherwise, the organization does not exist. And it is important that everyone brings their ability to the table. And when you are able to then look at the other person as an individual who's contributing, and everyone wants to be successful in their career, you want to just understand what is it that they bring on, what are the challenges that they have on it. And how am I able to make life easier for them so that they are able to provide the best to the company and to the clients? I think then the organization automatically detunes itself, right? And most organizations do that today. So reverse mentoring is nothing but that because technically speaking, the more higher up in the hierarchy that you are, the more cut off you are from clients, the more yeah. cut off you are from what's happening on the ground. The people on the ground really know the pulse of the organization. The more connected you are to them, the better it is for the organization at any point in time. It helps you understand their everyday challenges. It helps you make things better for them, which you can from your position of power. What can you achieve from a position of power? You can make life easier for others, right? So that is something that you can definitely do. But it all comes with that intention of wanting to make a difference and wanting to learn. Most of the successful leaders, and that's why they keep saying there's a difference between a leader and a manager. 
most leaders that we recognize are people who are very humble people who are very generous and people who really don't get bogged down by talking to anyone but more look at it as a learning opportunity and personally i think it is important to have that humility at every point in time you are very replaceable in your job in fact i remember uh, you know uh, this uh, is something that dr marshall goldsmith keeps speaking about saying that finding a replacement for you in your job is very very easy at home or in a personal relationship is not <laughs> most times we think that this is our life and we give everything by at the cost of a lot of relationships even at work we do things at the cost of relationships you don't need to really hurt someone you can mm-hmm. come from a space of kindness understand the other person's point of view you definitely have to have debates it is important to have debates not everyone will think like you diverse opinions help move organizations forward and more diversity you have in age in gender in thought uh, and in culture it really helps in driving the organization forward because that's when your growth really comes from but Absolutely. it requires the conscious effort of accepting people accepting their point of view and looking at it as what is good for the organization and for the clients i think things just automatically fall in place very good well said in fact I, i'm reminded of a very interesting piece of advice by one of the ceos um, i should you know he said we will continue to have differences but we should never become disagreeable you know uh, you know I mean, there is a very thin line of difference between you becoming having differences and you becoming not disagreeable well said fact, uh, they should. also say right that if people are not disagreeing with you are just listening to you it means something <laughs> is wrong absolutely it means that they have given up on you and they feel that nothing can change if you have to have debate you must have diversity now i, I it's my chance to disagree, disagree with you on one point of view now <laughs> now i think uh, uh, you know uh, in the sense uh, i think i have also read uh, in uh, qu- qu- quite a few forums and you know some articles as well i sure yeah that in fact people suggest that uh, i again you know it's a point of view maybe but i'm nevertheless let me put it forward the more people you know seek somebody else's advice in terms of you know it starts with maybe i come to you because you are my uh, a role model in my company i come to you saying that ma'am can you give me this you know uh, I- i'm going through this one how do you how do you think i should approach you know that kind of thing now it starts with that so slowly you start sharing your problem and therefore you are soliciting a suggestion or a solution from maybe mentor or maybe someone who's uh, up above there you know all that kind of thing but what it also might mean therefore is that they actually start giving their control to somebody else that's one point of view the second thing is that they actually become uh, you know losing out on their shock absorbing capacity that's the second one third one is that eventually it might actually become uh, an addiction kind of thing and where i'm coming from is they actually have done uh, some sort of clinical psychology studies where you know people start visiting this uh, you know uh, uh, clinical psych- uh, psychiatrists you know those kind of people it seems that at the drop of the hat you know they encourage uh, you know to visit a therapist or you know or a clinical psychologist or you know the, someone like that and therefore now for every small thing you know they start depending on somebody else and therefore you become very restless even at the smallest uh, instance of anything going wrong kind of so you know you have two different points in one is that you like we rightly said mentor is somebody who's really invested in your career who's really invested in your future and therefore you go and coach is somebody definitely because out of 100 people you seek out that person and you pay up the money and then he's bound to give you that advice it's just basically uh, you know like we have written here in kind a of corporate therapy kind of thing right so therefore so how do you you know uh, uh, distinguish this kind of thing where people should actually seek out somebody's help in in the form of maybe mentorship right and uh, or you know they should uh, also uh, uh, you know uh, have that sock of some capacity within themselves so therefore you know there's a nice mixture of it or do you think no i think uh, that's not the right way of doing it no i completely agree you you can't go to a mentor is not a problem solver mm-hmm. uh, right it is you have to deal with your stuff yourself the idea of having a mentor or a coach is specifically to bring a shift beyond what you are not able to do yourself it is not just for solution it is more for i would say reset uh, rather than resolve mm-hmm. right a, if a problem solver resolves your issues but a mentor or a coach helps reset your wiring and a coach also for example is a very limited period agreement it's a paid agreement it doesn't come free it it is basically says that if i'm working with a coach for x number of sessions it is like five sessions six session 12 session it is only that you have to do your work between the two between that one hour 45 minutes that you might spend 
every one month or every 45 days mm-hmm. you are supposed to do a lot of homework on yourself otherwise what you bring on the table is useless you're paying for an agreement in fact i've had coaches who are so authentic that three sessions down four sessions down they've refunded the money back to people to say that sorry you're not working on yourself i feel guilty taking money from you because you don't intend to change yourself and hence i do i want to terminate this agreement let's not go forward if it's not making money don't waste my time it's the same thing as a mentor these are typically people who are senior uh, typically people who are busy they have their own lives it's a time that you seek from someone it could probably be once a quarter uh, you know i think the earliest frequency that i've had with a mentor was always once a quarter not frequenter than that so it's not that everyday challenges you can just keep calling someone and asking uh, then you will never progress in life you have to build that skill set it is a balance it is all about whatever we do ourselves there can be those situations and bends where it's something very very new very very different where a different point of view helps challenge our thinking helps help us take a more conscious thought or a conscious decision uh, which is well thought through if you want that kind of a challenging conversation with someone who will help us navigate in crossroads that is when a mentor or a coach really steps in but it is not for your everyday conversations or building your skill sets at all absolutely maybe the last question for today evening uh, um um Uh, maybe you know in case um, excuse me in case something else come up but let me put it this way i think uh, there are two hollywood movies i think which are truly based on uh, true stories actually one of them is goodwill hunting which is based on mit you know janitor you would have heard other one is coach porter and um, this is again uh, based on a real these two are two stories but i think where the episodes can make two different uh, meanings uh, uh, from the point of view of coaching and mentoring right in the coach porter you know this gentleman is appointed as a basketball coach for in a high school uh, team and therefore he his job is to uh, you know make sure that this it trains them up and not only that training them up in the sport but also make sure that they are going through the studies which they were absolutely neglecting and therefore they are uh, falling on the wayside and therefore they are getting into all sort of problem because quote unquote the black you know problem there and therefore you know he goes through all that and finally you know he, and that team actually start goes on to win the not only win the game but also they get scholarship for the higher study so that's the thing where he takes the mission on him self to coach these people now they are not seeking but he is taking it right on there now in the second game where you have a goodwill hung again based on a true story uh, i should say right now there is a mighty professor and he find, finds one janitor who who rents uh, uh, who goes to a board and solves a big almost like a nobel prize winning kind of formula he just solves it in uh, no time and then he figures out as he tries to find out who could solve it and blah blah kind of. and then finally he finds out this and then he is not willing to change he just wants to be janitor but he's a super intelligent so therefore he comes out of the campus i mean out of the mit campus and then there is one a professor in psychology who who approaches and uh, not uh, and uh, because of you know some brawls he gets jailed and therefore he gets a bail and all that but he approaches uh, you know professor and say that can you please help this kid who is very uh, intelligent super intelligent but then um, you know uh, uh, you know uh, you know you should uh, you know coach him so therefore uh, or mentor him so that you know he will start seeing the true value of this one of course you know there's an entire episode about how he tries to you know negate that and finally he gives in because uh, he shares his own personal story there's a lot of uh, you know the emotion that goes through between you know the mentor and mentee kind of. so you have to extremes one where uh, uh, you know one one person takes on upon himself the job of coaching a specific team and the other one is where somebody gives to somebody else the job of mentoring and then he you know very unwillingly accept after you know a long time so how do you see these two things where somebody wants to coach you and that happens in every home where the grandparents or the father wants to mentor the child children they always oppose but then you know that part happens in i'm sure in every home how do you look at these two opposing points of view uh, uh, aishwarya so a very very uh, interesting point again right but ultimately it is about whose intent are we solving mm-hmm. uh, I'll, uh you know when you even at our families right and yesterday i was having this conversation with someone they were running something called a kindness project and it was very very interesting conversations we were actually saying that as a parent we keep saying a lot of things to our children uh, but it is is it really what the child wants to do or is it that what you want the child to do uh typically what happens is that and you know it's like the tare zameen pair right but it is like the the tutor actually becomes a coach for that 
child because he is able to understand the child and bring out what is unique about that child that's really what a coach really does in terms of going beyond what is visible to the eye and understanding that potential and helping you understand that potential yourself so that you are not dependent on someone else but all of these journeys have to be intentional a mentorship also has to be intentional if someone is not willing to take that time out for you then you have to look for a mentor who is equally invested in your success as you are wanting them to be otherwise just some of them you know in, in organizations is very very easy that anyone who senior management everyone wants as a mentor thinking that it will help me navigate my career it doesn't work like that you must have a personal relationship with that person which is beyond the conversation that you are having which is intentional which is built over time it is long term that is really what helps scale and move this forward it is not that it is a sense of you know whenever you call for it it's not a networking opportunity that you're trying to push your agenda forward right there are sponsors there are others who do that for you who mm-hmm. help create that visibility for you who come in your careers and go at various times but help step forward but they are not your mentors and your coaches so it is important for us to be clear of what are our expectation from each of these unique roles mm-hmm. your board can have multiple people different people can impact you in different ways but what are you expecting from each one is something that we have to go with clarity then we will not get into this confusion we would rather be able to get the best out of them in fact um, i think i must end on a very interesting note i think um, you know i think one of the slides you are referring to board of directors right i think one thing that um, i get to see in the wall street journal uh, i sure right every week i forget that day maybe on wednesday or thursday they have a beautiful column you know it's called as a board of directors and some of the ceos uh, you know they showcase uh, you know their uh, board of directors and how you know they have been uh, mentored i mean of course not from everybody's from the same industry like you right said but they you know uh, of course it weighs two ways kind of thing but it's a very interesting concept i think like uh, family business have family offices i think you know for you know everybody having a you know board of directors at a personal level is a fantastic idea thank you so much aishwarya and uh, and it's pleasure hosting you especially on a saturday evening and sorry for that but it's absolutely great um, you know to hear your thoughts on a wonderful uh, you know where, where i would say you know like we have written there it's a therapy in one sense maybe i think an invisible therapy that everybody goes through it or maybe need it at, at the end of the day but you know like you rightly said there's a difference between you know coach and uh, like you also said you know whom what kind of coaches we should seek or especially certified coaches like you know rightly said but thank you so much for your wonderful uh, uh, discussion on this uh, great topic on coaching and mentor especially for a career progression thank you so much i should from all of us Thank you thank you so much Dr Chaudhary and Times Pro and uh, thanks for having me here and uh, like i said uh, you know uh, just one thing i would like to say is therapy is always backward looking uh, <laughs> a coaching is forward looking or a Absolutely. mentorship is also present looking so that's the difference therapy exactly. is backward looking mentorship is for present and a coach or a coach agreement is forward looking that's really Absolutely. how i define it but thank Absolutely. you for having me here and wonderful being here today thank you so much